Hi, now you're here again with another round of new features for AudioSwift. This update is version 2.3.4 beta, available to download on the audioswiftapp.com website. This version includes changes in the user interface, some of them requested by many of you, and I'm going to cover them on the first section of this video. The second part is for Ableton Live users. I made a custom MIDI control script for AudioSwift in slider mode that makes it easier to control macros or any single Ableton device or third-party plugin. The script updates the parameters information into the console and trackpad windows in real time. But more on this later. First, let's check the interface changes. On previous beta updates, we included the option to select which window will open when AudioSwift was called. Now we can change the transparency of these windows. This is good for users working on MacBooks where there is not too much space on screen and you want to see what's under the console. The windows retain full visibility when you click on them and are focused. If you work with different desktop spaces, now the AudioSwift console and trackpad windows will only stay on one desktop at a time. They won't appear on all desktops like on previous versions when we change to another space. There's a new option to turn AudioSwift off. On Preferences, General tab, click on Use 4 5 fingers tab to turn AudioSwift off with the same 4 or 5 fingers tab gesture that you selected above to turn it on. Now be careful using this option especially when the record button is running because you can still send MIDI before AudioSwift is turned off. You can accidentally play an extra note, a CC message, or change a fader value in your mix. If you notice, the presets settings buttons are no longer here on the preferences window. They are now in the main menu. Save preset, low preset, and return to default. The key shortcut for the MIDI command all notes off or CC123 is no longer the F key. Now it's the slash key, or if you have a keyboard in another language, it's the key to the left of the shift key. Changes were made on both console and trackpad windows for the X, Y, and slider modes. With the slider mode, I made small changes on spaces between the parameters so the console can look more clean. When you call AudioSwift, the MIDI values are shown below the CC numbers. Before, it was shown in the same place where the CC number is. With the trackpad window, the title shows the mode and also the current bank or view. Values of the sliders are now represented by numbers and with the animated bars. For pitch bend and relative formats, the bar is on a fixed position. If you right click the window, you have the option to turn the animation off or even the fingers positions. The same goes for the XY mode. In the console, the values of the XY pads are still shown where the CC number is. But if you change to the settings panel, the values are now below the CC numbers. With the trackpad window, XY values are graphically represented with a circle. If you choose a pitch bend or relative format, circle positions are fixed and won't move. The second part of this video applies to Ableton Live users. AudioSwift now has an Ableton Live script for the slider mode. It is a custom MIDI console script for Live that interacts with AudioSwift. Before going into the details and before someone asks me, I just want to say that I won't be creating another script for other DAWs. Right now, only for Ableton. Doing this one took me so much time because the information to do it is not easily accessible on the web. I had to navigate through a lot to find out how to make it with Ableton Live. For this particular script, I use a third-party software that generates part of the code. But I still did a lot of code by myself in Python to make the script communicate with AudioSwift the way I wanted to. I'm probably going to check again the code and redesign it for Scratch in the future, now that I'm learning more about this subject. I'm also looking to have another Ableton Live's custom script for the mixer mode, instead of using the Mackey control protocol, which has some limitations. Okay, back to the script. It has been tested with Ableton Live 10 and 11. I don't know if it works with older versions. If you have an older version, I'd appreciate if you can tell me if it works or not. The script communicates with AudioSwift via MIDI and updates the parameters, info, 
of the selected device into the console and trackpad windows. It allows quick access to these parameters instantly from the trackpad. Use this script to control several parameters using the trackpad in case you don't have another MIDI encoders available, or for accessing the devices without the need to open them. For example, if you work with four or five different types of compressors, you can create a preset for each one where the parameters are always the same in the same order. Threshold, ratio, attack, release, etc. Then use the trackpad to manipulate the parameters when they are selected. This script works with macros, single Ableton devices, and third-party plugins. First, we need to install the script in Ableton Live. Close the app. After downloading the files from my website, go to your application folder. Look for the version of the Ableton Live app, right-click, and choose Show Package Content. Click Contents, then App Resources, and then MIDI Remote Scripts. In this folder, you'll find all the other scripts from different brands. We need to copy the AudioSwift Control script in this folder. Look up the file you just downloaded and move the complete folder into the MIDI Remote Scripts folder in Ableton. Do not change the name of the folder. Close the windows. Launch Ableton Live and launch AudioSwift. Go to Live, Preferences, Link Tempo MIDI. Under Control Surface, look for the AudioSwift Control script. Select AudioSwift 3 on both input and output. Under MIDI ports, go to the input of AudioSwift Control and check all the boxes. Leave the output unchecked. Close the window. On AudioSwift, go to the console and choose the slider mode. There are two ways to activate the Ableton Live script in AudioSwift. One is by going to Preferences, Slider, and XY tab, and click Enable Ableton Live script in slider mode. The second way is by using the shortcut Control Option Command A. By doing this, the console and trackpad windows will update the device information. Right now, since my track doesn't have any devices selected, the information will be empty in AudioSwift. Calling the Ableton Live script in AudioSwift won't delete your previous settings in the slider mode. If I press again Control Option Command A, it goes back to my current slider mode settings. Let's insert an instrument or effects rack with macros to test the script and select it. Both console and trackpad windows show the name of the device and the current first parameters of the bank. It shows the label of each parameter and its current value. If we call AudioSwift with a four or five finger tap gesture and touch a slider, the values change. Touch the slider while holding the Option key and the parameter is set back to its default value. AudioSwift will work in banks of 16 parameters using up to four sliders at a time. As you can see, we are now on bank one and the A means the first four parameters. Bank 1B will mean the next four and so on. Bank 2A starts from parameter 17 and up. To get control of the next group of parameters in the bank, press C and X or comma and period. I press X and now we can control the next four parameters in bank 1B. Press again X and we jump to bank 1C. If the device has more than 16 parameters, jump to the next band by using the same shortcuts but while pressing the shift key. I'll press shift X and now we are on bank 2A for the 17 parameter and up. Instruments and effect racks only have 17 parameters available. The rest of sliders will be empty in the audio Swift windows. To jump to the next device, press C and V or N and M. It will set AudioSwift to bank 1A of the next device. The AudioSwift control script can also be used with single Ableton devices or third-party plugins. With Ableton devices, the order of the parameters shown in the console can be changed. They will always be in the same position. The only way to reorder the parameters is to put the device inside a rack. Map the parameters to macros and save the whole rack as a preset. With third-party plugins, use the Configure button to set the order of the parameters. Then right-click and select 
save as default configuration for the next time you insert the plugin. Troubleshooting. Depending on the plugin format, if it's audio units, VST or VST3, you find that some plugins will display the values in ranges from 0.0, .0 to 1.0 instead of the real range. See this example. These two parameters are the same, but one is in audio units format and the other is VST3. They display the same values differently to AudioSwift. The audio unit version shows the threshold in the range 0.0, .0 to 1.0. The VST3 format, however, is shown in the real decibels range. The problem seems to happen most with audio units. Try choosing the VST3 version of the plugin if you see this problem. I still need to find out a solution to this issue. Sometimes when you insert a plugin, the AudioSwift console doesn't update the information automatically. To fix this, just turn AudioSwift on and it will display the selected device. I haven't found the option to lock the controllers to a device with the blue hand. If you right click the device, you won't see the option available for the AudioSwift control script. I need to check again on the web to find a way to add this feature. AudioSwift with the Ableton Live script enabled uses the CC numbers 21 to 36 in relative B format with the mini channel 16 for controlling the 16 parameters. It also uses CC numbers 37 to 39 to communicate several messages between Live and AudioSwift. You can still use the same CC numbers in the XY mode or the slider mode with the Ableton Live script running or not as long as you don't put AudioSwift in MIDI channel 16. Otherwise, you will have conflicts with the script. You need to turn off the Ableton Live script in AudioSwift if you're going to use any MIDI learn function with the XY mode inside Live. It is necessary because AudioSwift with the Ableton Live script turned on sends a CC39 message to Live, causing to always map the parameter to CC39. The script uses size X MIDI messages to transmit the names and values of the parameters to AudioSwift. Since size X only allows 128 possible values for a single character, I used the standard ASCII computer code table, not the extended one that has more characters, and I had to adjust some special characters used on different language to this table. You'll see vowels with accent will appear without them in AudioSwift. Letters with tildes or dieresis will also appear without them. Some special characters will be displayed as a vowel or consonant that looks similar in form. Anything else will appear as an asterisk. Tips and tricks. Some time ago I shared a tutorial on how to set the instant mapping feature in Ableton Live with AudioSwift. You can still use that instant mapping setup as long as you don't use the same CC numbers on MIDI channel 16 as I explained before. Both scripts can be running in the preferences window without problems. You just switch on and off the Ableton Live script on AudioSwift with the key shortcut control option command A to use one or the other in the slider mode or set the instant mapping with the controllers of the XY mode with the CC numbers in another MIDI channel. Since the Ableton Live script uses relative MIDI, you can set up the instant mapping and the controllers in the XY mode in Absolute MIDI, for example. I hope you like this new update. Please give it a try. Again, your feedback is really appreciated. It allows me to know if these new features for AudioSwift are in the right direction. Take care.